Hello and everyone, welcome to S2 Tournaments. I am your caster here as well as Sick. Um, we have Plague on the ARP, Echoes killing first against Rockus. And we do see Riggy here setting up his top side here by spitting on all these generators, making sure those survivors get infected if they start to work them. We do see him heading down towards this bottom side and all of the generators, I believe, are gonna be infected now and we do see a split corrupt and still no survivors yet to be found here someone looks like they might have crossed here but riggy still not finding a single survivor these survivors playing very stealthy here trying to wait out that corrupt and work as many gens as possible before the first chase happens We do see the pain res, and we do see the Ada getting caught out here, and she will be getting puked on, but Riggy is choosing to leave, and he's going on to Yui now. And he's going to commit to Yui, and possibly we'll see a broken here, but actually we'll just be seeing a hit being taken out as he tries to find another survivor get them infected. And we do see him reapplying the vomit onto these generators at the top side here. Corrupt slowly running out and we still have not had the first down for this game here. Riggy choosing to stay on this top side of the map where there is a 4 gen and it doesn't look like there's much progress. We do see the Corrupt running out, and we do see this bottom mid-gen getting worked on now. <clears throat> All right, that, that's actually, man, good job taking it up. And yes, it is sick here casting with Snipes. I'm having a great time. And honestly, it's the first time that we've seen a Plague uh, in S2 in a long time. And I'm quite excited for it, especially for the fact that Echoes picked this killer. So I want to know how good Wrigley is at playing it. Yes, and we do see... Ada being fully broken now, taking chase, but Riggedly is just getting these resources out. He, she catches out Yui, and that will be the first down of the game. And we do see an eruption proc. Very nice. That was a decently quick down, but not, not too quick. They were going around trying to infect survivors, and we only see that two of them so far have not been infected. Must mean that they're going around trying to work on generators that she hasn't got to quite yet, as we see our first stack of pain res. Yes, and it didn't actually hit this bottom mid one, but it hit Shaq instead. Don't see too much progress, honestly, for this first um, first um, hook here. What do we think uh, is going to happen later on? Well, if I had to assume, Snipes, I'm going to assume that the, the at least the plague is going to go around, puke up on the generators, puke on certain uh, you know spots where survivors are going to try to vault windows, pallets, and spread the infection, because only having two survivors infected is not that great. You want to have them all injured so that you have your full ability of like you know being that m1 killer because if you don't have him affected you got to hit him twice even if you do have your um you know power up absolutely and we do see brutal being taken over the Nat instead usually plagues run thana and riggedly choosing to go for more of an aggressive kind of build here and we do see this shack gen getting very close to completion still not another town for these Gen progressions. Yeah, 100%. Only still two infected survivors. I know the plague is trying to go around and get every gen, but as she does that, this is exactly what's going to happen. The survivors are going to be able to get generators done for free as we see two pop here. And we did see Ace over in this corner, but Ace is doing a very good job at not being found here. Let's see if Riggedly can find them this time around as we do see another kick onto this gen and we will see them getting edge map but a sprint burst away will prevent the first puke coming out here did delay it for a second which was nice but unfortunately obviously ace gets hit with it again and we almost got it it looked like it was going to be on the tap over there wow. but it didn't happen yeah tapping out here in the top side, getting almost caught out would have been very good for Riggedly to get all four survivors infected. 
That way he can start picking up his apple. <laughs> Ooh, that was a good stun. Very good stun indeed, and Ace is doing a good job keeping here topside. However, that's the what, exactly what Riggedly wants here, as he does have a 4-gen here. Survivor's popping another generator and only one hook state, but the plague is getting everybody infected now. Ooh, barely misses it and gets hit with the stun by the pack, and gets hit with Champion of Light too, gonna make wow. some distance with that. Good from getting that champion of light value. You see the plague not being able to catch up as this ace is going to be able to make another very safe pallet. And plague opting to probably go for a corrupt. And yes, we do see that. We do see her grabbing one of her corrupt fools here. Now this is where it's going to really matter on how the plague plays right here and gets as much snowball as possible as there is only one hook state for three generators that are popped and we just seen just a second ago that there was a bunch of survivors doing generators all separated going to be unable to get any of them off right now gets the ace eruption does hit but did it affect any of the gins that they were on gonna need a pain rest stack here immediately yeah and we did see that third generator that popped was in the four gen so there's no, now only a three gen here and it's honestly not that easy to hold as there is one behind this main building here and we do see another injured here possibly going to be coming out as a quick down onto ada this chase is going to be important i know the survivors are probably doubling up on those gens and making sure that they can try to pop them before going for the on hook it really really it wouldn't really matter if he hit second stage but we see our second down now. And now Onhook, is it able to get over there and hit him? No, not quite yet. Oh, unfortunately. Last mine good coming try in. Good from <laughs> yeah. oh. No, definitely a good, uh, good try. Holy. That was definitely a good try for sure. This should be Ada's first hook as well, too. An attempted flashlight coming in, but no cigar here, and we do see the third pain res stack coming out. Cap being the last survivor to get infected, and also going to be the last oh. in the head. Oh! Yui getting caught out here. Not good at all. The killer called it. That is so great. We finally see our first locker grab, and then everybody's infected now, too. So this is where the building of pressure is coming up. Regularly trying to come back and make it happen. Gotten two hook states with no gins popping. Three hook states, I'm sorry. And this, the pressure that the survivors have been amounting has come to a very slow halt here. As we see another down on the ace here. Wow. Only survivor left that hasn't been hooked is the tap, like you said. Everybody else has been hooked at least once. And Ray is really doing a very good job at keeping... He does catch out the tap here. This could be very, very huge for him here. Yep, applying that eruption on those generators while she has a chance to. Here's the survivor behind. Gonna probably go right back to Cook. I would assume to make sure that no one can trade. I think if I'm if I'm the survivors here right now, I'm gonna take Ada and go for the unhook. But still, actually, Ada, yeah, yeah, Ada's the one that's not been double hooked. It was Yui. And here comes Ada. We did see Ada cleanse, and so she will be able to go. But unfortunately, Yui dying on this hook. And we do know that tap was over here. Very good awareness here from Rigidly. Okay, you know, tap's going to have to do something for the team. This is going to be very important. We hear the generators being almost done and worked on, and she can get this knock and get that pain res as well to the last stack. It's going to be very good for the slowdown that she definitely needs. Rigidly does. Oh my goodness, good pathing here from the tap. The fake. Oh, barely misses. Oh my gosh, the bloodlust one almost coming in and hitting the tap at the window, but unfortunately missing, and he's going to have to leave. But they doubled the gen, and we're able to break this three gen. And now it's a very good gen split for these survivors. Oh no, I know the plague is not happy with that. Oh no, man. Had good pressure too, holding that three gen, but now it's going to be broken up. Survivors did what they were supposed to do optimally as well. Getting on that and doubled working it, it was able to pop it too. Now she's going to definitely need to get tap. We do see that window blocking and tap is going to have to leave the main building here. It does make it to a very safe pallet. And 
We'll see if Wrigley continues this chase here because he does know the survivors are going to be building that other gen. But we do have a pain res on tap, so this might be very killer here. Oh, <laughs> this is what they're doubling up. Yeah, Wrigley's going to need to have a pain res. And is it? Yes. Yes. Oh, I know he is thanking the RNG gods right now, and we do see two corrupt pools on this side of the map. So he's more than more than happy to go down here and take one of these, I'm guessing, by this generator here. Yeah, no reason not to, especially because it's not out of the way, like you said. Most of the time, you'll see survivors try to cleanse farther away from where they're working on generators, especially in a 3-gen scenario to where the plague is forced to have to traverse across the entire map to get her uh, corruption, which sometimes is not even worth the time it takes. Ace cleansing as well on this bot side and rigidly also knowing where he cleansed because the white aura is showing up as soon as he cleansed. Is that from one of the add-ons? No, that's base kit. He's um, play can see oh, okay, the, okay. Uh, yeah, so when they someone cleanses, you'll be able to see where he can pick up his corrupt now. Oh yeah, right. I forgot. That's how you know I barely played the plague before. And let's see what survivors are doing. And they are doubling up. They're going to be able to pop it. And we are officially in the end game now. Let's see how this goes. Only one survivor is oh not injured. Gosh. But these gates, not a very good gate for these survivors as they're both on the shack side of the map. And we do see progress on this, and that means we will know that Ace is nearby. He still has the corrupt and will be able to get a really free hit here. And possibly a two tap, but the Ace barely gets to the window. Oh. And we see another a cleanse here from the survivors. Just enough to get the ace down. Oh my gosh. And ace is only on his first hook, so that's two extra stages if uh, Wrigley can keep, keep the survivors from getting the unhook, which oh my gosh. we shouldn't so see. Hook right next to this corrupt, and they're going to be getting this again to get more duration here. And they, we do see the amulet to increase the duration of their corrupt purge. However, both survivors are healthy, so Riggedly is going to have to keep up that pressure on the hook and the gates. Another injure on tap. Oh, nice. Stun. Oh. Takes her out of her power, out too. Of power. Oh, no, that's oh, going to no. hurt. I know Riggedly is kicking himself right now for walking through that pallet, but he does go back to the hook here. Maybe trying to find out this ace to secure more stages or possibly trying to find the Ada. And we do see Ada at this filler. And Ada's going to be first hook as well too, but not a, not enough to infect her though. They're working on the door. She needs to be careful. Brigadily needs to get this uh, injury fast. Or he's not going to be able to do nothing. Nope, not enough. Wait, they opened the wrong gate though. They open the farther gate, and she's gonna get infected and get fully thing down. And she does go down at the pallet. And there's two survivors still injured nearby. Don't want to push them out too far because then they might be able to get hatch. Oh, caught the ace off. Oh my goodness. Just got to get bloodlust here. Bloodlust. Indeed. Ace worth the more stages here as he has only been hooked once. Riggedly will definitely be opting to go for this person and he might get a pick up here after throwing the shack pellet. No, eight on the wrong side. Oh, does he make it? Is he far enough? No, I don't think so. Think dead hard maybe? No, there's no, yeah, no, no. No, oh. no dead hard now. Uh, it's going just to be very enough. close to the point. Oh, come on. Oh, oh he gets him. Oh. Riggedly picks him up just at the last second. And whoa. Who escaped? Was it? It was, uh. It was Tap. Tap was the one that got out, and Ada's still on the ground. Oh! Ace did hit second, but I don't think that Ada will be able to get out through Hatch in time. As we see the pickup coming in. Wow. What a game this has been. Yes. 100%. So that total's gonna put. It's gonna be 24 to 17. Very nice. As we only seen one survivor escape the trial. Now I'm interested to see how Rockus is gonna play this game now, coming in. Absolutely. Two hooks 
Do you going out? That would be a 3k10. And we are back on ARP with Ruckus on the killer this time. Sorry for the delay there. A little bit of te technical difficulties with the balancing. We are testing out killer balancing specific instead of just general balancing. And we see the same setup starting happening, starting to happen, spitting on the gens. And we do catch out a couple survivors here this time early on. And we do see Meg very dodge, narrowly dodging this, but eventually getting cute on here. And Killer Zerekis is going to be committing to this very early on. Choosing a more aggressive playstyle than the one that the team for Echo did. And we see a first down already. Start. Very, very quick down. Yeah, starting off strong. And I was expecting to see Unicorn. I was expecting the Unicorn to come in here and play a little bit stronger based off of the wing con that, that uh, they are put up against with uh, Rackets. I mean, uh, sorry, Echoes, his gameplay last game was very good. Was able to get all the deaths besides one and sec secured, what, 26 points, I think it was? If I'm not mistaken, it was 24 points. So 24, now they're going to have to do a little bit better than that. And the most you can get in a killer match with a 4K is 28. So only four point difference. The Plague is going to have to do very good. As we see the first down, like you said, no generators have popped yet. We did see... We do see a different build, though, coming out. We do see that no way out instead of the eruption. And we do see different add-ons opting to go for the double apple, which means two more corrupt things as Taft gets infected here, being the second survivor infected. Whoa. <laughs> what a hit that was through the window. And getting a kick here onto this generator as the Nancy, I believe, runs off into the distance. Yeah, I guess the team is starting to realize that they need to slow down a little bit as we get our second hook state. They didn't go for the on-hook. I'm very surprised about that. And they just now get it. So it looks like they were kind of rotating and didn't make it in time. Bad decision on their end. And we see a blind coming in, which is a very good placement. But the second hook state is going to be very unfortunate. They're going to have to cleanse and keep themselves away from the killer for as long as they can. Well, that doing a very good job though at this TNL, and we do see the first generator popping. We didn't see a Panrias on that first hook, so that could have possibly helped the survivors out. And Claude is doing a very good job at dodging this. And yes, Unicorn being very, very wary of the pallet as he doesn't want to get stunned out of it. However, he does get the hit on the pod. Yes, and continues over here to the strong shack. Only if they had, and they do have corrupt action. That's what I'm saying. If only corrupt would make this not so strong for the survivors. All we have to see is Unicorn do something with the puke. It almost gets to stun, but not quite yet. As Claudette goes down and Shaq. Yes, and this will be the second hook. Possibly seeing a pain res coming out here and slowing down and getting that second way, second stack of no way out is going to be definitely very good for securing this win con. And they got the healthy Nancy going in for the on-hook. Not a bad play while they double up all the way across the map. They should be able to get it done before the Plague is able to make it back and transverse to that cross of the map. And we see the on-hook coming. Maybe the Plague decides to push over or no, wants to go over there because they missed a skill check. That's an extra 10% off the gen already. Wow, and the unhook does come out eventually, but the Plague will know that there's some survivors out here and will catch out. Tap here, and that will be the second hook coming in, possibly. Oh, it's a very good stun here. Yeah, he had smash hit, but wasn't able to make it anywhere, and that's going to be unfortunate as he will not make it to another pallet and gonna go down here. Oh, well, look, Nancy was trying to go for the flashlight save. Oh, but the killer faces the wall. Unlucky for the Nancy there. Nancy needs to do a very good job at stealthing here to prevent that fourth um, person getting infected. But we do see Meg, who is dead on hook, cleansing very far away from the killer. Yeah, I was expecting to see a cleanse a little bit early on, but we didn't. But able to get it done now, and that is very valuable for her team as she does not want to get caught out in the open and be injured and be on death hook. It would be a very fast chase, so she will be alive a little bit longer in this matchup. 
We still only have one generator popped. You should see one coming in any second now. I'm surprised the survivors haven't. But they haven't put a lot of pressure. Only one stack of pain res used and three stacks of no way out. Only one survivor hasn't been hooked yet. And I wouldn't be shocked if Unicorn either camps to second here or camps to death because we do see a corrupt purge here. But we do see Nancy coming in possibly for the trade here. And I don't think the Unicorn will be able to get the infection off on Nancy in time. But doing a good job at body blocking, but Nancy will be getting the trade here before second state comes out. Nancy being slugged, but Unicorn opting to go back here. Possibly another pain res, but another gen pops. They definitely needed that. That was definitely needed there for the survivors. Nancy being hooked. Still has two stacks of pain res, though. Not a, I don't think that was a pain res hook then. Is that but that, that was, was a pain res. Oh, that, that was, was a oh. pain res. Okay, so still, still two tacks. Res. So the taint, tap is the only one, and the other tap survivor. Tap and Meg. Yeah, tap and Meg. Okay. And Meg. Very nice though. Still two stacks, which could be very valuable in the end game, but we'll see how they use it. Fast unhook coming out from the survivors here on Echo, and we will be seeing another corrupt pool being ingested here as they have so much pressure. We do hear a lot of of progression on this gen, but it will not be being popped before it's kicked. We see a lot of survivors here nearby, and we see Tap not getting hit over this rock just quite yet. He's opting to die on the pallet. Let's see if we go see a pallet save here. We did see a couple survivors lurking around. Could potentially be what the survivors need. Oh no, Meg gets found out here and gets two tapped. She's no. the death on the hook. And this is a pain res too. This gen this gen progression that was super high could be very just interrupted here. And, and as Meg goes down. It is a pain res. And there's still one stack left. And all survivors are injured besides the Claudette, but she should be getting her infection any minute now or any second as we see the play grab her corruption. This could be this right here could be the uh, the best like use of her power right now. It's gonna de depict if this match is gonna be over now or or later. Oh my gosh, Tap doing a good job at this pallet once more. However, let's see if he can continue this up. Like not wanting to walk through that pallet and Tap going and crouching below, just barely dodging it and Tap rigidly showing up again for his team as we do see another gen pop yes when we do it's gonna be the third generator of the trial while we see another hook on the detective tap giving another two points to the killer right now a total of 18 to 9 so the survivors are doing a good job finishing up these gens okay. that would that will be the last pain res being pulled out from the tap here no more gen regression from Unicorn here, and he's grabbing another pool. As both survivors are injured, this this unhook is going to be very risky. Yeah, they would have to cleanse, and doing that would give the Plague the exact location of them, and they do not want that because she will go right back straight to them. There's no reason not to. Still two generators up, and all she has to do is get a 4K. So Unicorn's very comfortable in this positioning. If Even if survivors pop one more generator, it really wouldn't matter to her as long as they are able to get the 4K completely with no survivors escaping as we see the Claudette go down. And where is the Nancy? She is going for the unhook and will be able to make it, fortunately for her team. Do you see the pickup on Claude here? And that will be second state confirmed here. But the survivors are in a very bad spot. Two gens still let to go, yet to go. No way out. Have four stacks. They need that. They need Nancy to get out in here in order to tie. Nancy needs to stealth here. And he will out of here. The survivor's not able to get on any generators at all. So much and pressure. One. Yeah, another corruption. This is, she doesn't even even need it right now. Unicorn doing a great job, and all they need is three more hook states, or one more actually. 
Let me check it again. So it was, yeah, it's 20 to 9, and okay, so 24, 17, so only four more points. So two more hooks to tie it up. And another two states would make it a four point victory. And we do see the unhook coming out on Claude. Survivors opting to not cleanse here. This was her last corrupt pool. So, Survivors, if they play this well, they could possibly make something work. But they need to play this extremely well if they want to meet this win con. Yeah, I would not want to be in this situation right now where I'm... Where I'm, you know, Team Echoes hanging on by a thread, trying to pop another two generators and get at least somebody out. Even if it's through the hatch, it's better than nothing. But another two hook states would be the game for him. As Rockus is doing a fantastic job on the plague set. And then they will be playing the next set first. I mean, there's, yeah, the next set first too as well. So a lot of momentum going in if they're able oh, to I'm secure this victory. And we hear a call from the Claudette. Our Nancy. Oh. This is very bad for the survivors. Nancy, D1 survivor, they don't want to possibly get. And we do see a very good gen split though. Two on both either side, so the survivors are be able to pressure either side. Oh, and misses! And, oh! Nancy, possibly having that Brazil to make that vault very quick. And we've seen both survivors on two different generators. Unicorn needs to make this chase last no longer, as they do, thank God, was able to get the knock. This was going to be very detrimental if Unicorn was not able to get a fast down. Might not even make it to one of the generators, though, for sure, with the detective tap is on, as we see the second hook stay on the Nancy, finally. And let's look over real quick. Yep, the tap is going to 100% be able to finish that generator. Absolutely. However, the plague is coming here. The, he either has to die for this or pre-leave. And it, see Claude joins the Nancy. And it is, looks like a pre-leave. He's going to have to take her as far as away as possible. This is not the area that he wants to be in. He does have a nice pilot to work with right here to be able to make some distance, but not much as he's going back to Shaq and has nowhere else to run. Does he still have it? Oh, and he gets hit through the window. Unicorn with an amazing swing. Wow. Excellent job from Unicorn. Zoning tap into this corner of the map here and where he has nothing to go. And this will be the death onto Riggy. And we'll be entering the 2v1 here with two gems still left to pop. And we see Detective Tap going down a 2v2. And they have the pressure on the generators. It's just if they doubled up, if they didn't, they might not be able to get it done. We saw the TAPS generator, and they did, at least they got that one done. But the generator that TAP was on was not finished yet, as the killer was able to kick it. Now the choice is their survivors. Are they going to be able to hide it out to where the plague doesn't find them, and they can make a cross on the choke point and go for that last generator and pop it and get a survivor out? And we don't see them near this generator, not near edge map, possibly hiding behind this main building hiding edge map corner where the plague will not be able to hear them coughing and vomiting and the survivors oh. opting not to cleanse we see oh. one at main i mean shack sorry we already see nancy cross the shack but plague is coming back here and nancy doesn't really have many resources out here but <sighs> unicorn doesn't doesn't see them or hear them this could be really big This could be huge for the survivors here, for Echoes. Well, let's see, did they able, were they able to cross around? They were, and they see them working on the generator. Yes, we have the Claudette here, but is she able to keep the, the killer on her? What? She didn't look, what? I, oh, I don't think it's enough time. No, and this will be the confirmed win con for you. Yeah, this will be. is not happy with this. Yeah. I don't think. As long as she gets that hook like you're saying, Snipes, she would win the set. But once to go back and push that generator, that might not be a good idea. Oh my gosh, this is going to be down to the wire. We do still have that no way out here. And we see the last it generator popping. And popped. Very unfortunate. And no way out, not proccing as Nancy gets pushed here more further into Shack. Not many pallets here to work with as we saw. But they're going to be going to this fun bus. Or the crane, I should say. That is very safe pallet. Not going to blind off. And we see and, and the, hit the pallet. And Nancy goes down. This is going to be oh, confirmed on no. 4K. And didn't use No Way Out. Not able to. So that is a very dominating performance from Unicorn for Team Ruckus.
That was really good. We thought we were going to probably see the end game there. We did see the last generator pop, but nothing else after that. So very great performance as we see the third hook coming on the Nancy. And all we got to do is find the Claudette now. And Claudette just slugging it out in this corner, but the Plague will be finding him and confirming the 4K0 and the win con for Rockus very well that early game was just so strong from Rockus there on the fake set all right welcome back everybody we have ghost face on Larry's with Rockus killing against team echoes this is going to be a very interesting matchup as Rockus has won the first set and this is the set that they picked for the second one as it's going to be Ghostface. So I'm very excited. We love seeing Ghostface on Larry's. And I'm here with my co-caster, Snipes. What's your predictions and what's your overall feelings about the set with these two teams that are playing it now as we see a lot of stock coming up too on the ace? Absolutely. I love Ghostface sets. You know, the comms have to be on point for the survivors here. We do see ace getting marked up very heavily and we do see no corrupt. And I'm excited for this match as his name is Shrouded Ghostface. So you Literally. gotta see something, something special coming out here. And he is ready for this. You know set, what? Definitely. I love, I love that you said that, Stipes, because that's his name in Discord as well too, and that's his profile picture. P100 Ghostface. You know he's strong. You know he knows what he's doing on this killer as he is playing it for his team. I cannot wait to see this P100 Ghostface. You, I have never seen one before personally. Doesn't mean it's great, but if you play cop and you got a P100 killer, that is definitely your go-to killer. Decides to leave Gore. Gets that play with your food stacks. Very nice. Whoa. We do see play with your food on the Claude, and I think Ghostface here is going to want to get these play with your food stacks up as much as possible and catch these survivors off guard with the speed. And he's going to get a little bit of stock off. And we do see Ooh. your typical add-ons. Yep, we from the Ghostface. Yep. Olsen's wallet and the drop leg knife sheep when marking. Oh, and, oh, that is so, so killer. Yes, he's gotten so much stock on survivors. We have three of them, two of them that are basically, they're close enough to where if he uh, puts his shroud up, they can't even expose him before he uh, can get enough to, uh, exp to expose them. And then on top of that, Gore is just right there too as well. Three forces the way up. Very nice job from Shrouded Ghostface here. As we continue moving on in the earlier games of this stage with Ghostface on Larry's. See, all the survivors are creeping. They have no idea where he's at. They have no comms on him. So the pressure is built up. He could be stalking any survivor and coming up for the kill. And they know that as well too as we get more eruption value on these generators. Survivor's playing very safe. This is what you typically see against Ghostface. If you don't know where he's at, you're going to be not working on generators. But we do see a little bit of progress here on Ace. He is at this God Pallet, and he will be going down. But Olsen's wallet yep. is going to be coming in handy as he gets his Shroud back immediately after breaking this pallet. I know it has to be difficult to play around that sometimes, knowing that when you drop a pallet, you're going to give it right back to him. Another one goes down. He's seen the Renato, the only survivor he hasn't got any stock on. And as he does, he's going to get it to 99. All survivors, all survivors except for the Claudette is basically 99. No, they all are. Yeah, they definitely all are. Of them. This is good. And Corrupt, uh, I mean, yeah, um, Eruption is getting popped on all these generators. And he has three stacks of pain. Where, I mean, uh, play with your food. So he is definitely vibing as we continue on. He's going to catch a survivor offhand and going to be moving 15% faster and going to get enough distance to be able to surprise attack them. Oh, now almost 99 on the gore. Oh, yep. Oh, it does oh. get stunned. As we see our first generator pop. Stunned. And yes, we do see that gen pop. I wouldn't be surprised if they were doubling it just to get one of them out of the way and get this pressure onto the ghost face here but we do see this play with your food coming out and we do see tout trying to take a hit but he doesn't realize that he is 99 and we see the eruption proc and only one play with your food stack gone two no he gets it back he gets it right back because of tap he was technically wow. in a chase and think about Incredible. it dude when you play against ghost face you don't know if you're able to take a hit or not and in that instance if he didn't have full stock on that tap let's say about halfway you know a little bit less he would have been able to get exposed before he was able to get the, the tap um, 
uh, exposed as well. So they wouldn't have been able to get the down right there for Trouted. But he was able to and still has three stacks of uh, play with your food. And one stack was used of pain res. And now we just got pop going. Let's check what the survivors are doing. Who are finally getting the exposed oh. status off of them. I bet you he is feeling a little bit more safer now that that mark is gone. And we do see the ghost face coming back to hook here. Either survivor doesn't... Oh, he does get Renato through the little crack. And that speed coming in. And this is a very unsafe pallet. But he's opting to go for... I don't know, but Claudette doing a well, good job knowing that they're not stocked anymore. Take this hit for the tap. But he does get another stack of play with your food. He's been oh getting it right God. back. That is incredible. And still on Wrigley. Rigidly. However you pronounce oh. his name. Oh, and misses by oh. barely. Even with the extra 15%, he wasn't enough. And has a great pallet. No, I think that pallet was dropped. Ace is into trouble. He doesn't bite and doesn't drop the pallet. Very nice here. Almost paid for it as we see the first bloodlust. Oh, and gets the stun. Oh very nice. Gosh. Through playing that very, usually unsafe pallet very well, and Ghostface opting to leave him. And wow, from what we saw in the beginning, we had so many survivors 99, and now. Renato losing his mark as well. The survivors are taking back this pressure that Ghostface had in the beginning. I know they're doing an amazing job right now, and we know that Shrouded had put a lot of pressure, but we see that Ridgely and uh, that Renato have no stock, and Gore barely has any, and Get Ran by Drew is the only one exposed, but it's going away in just a second. So the pressure will be reset, and we're back to square one with only one hook state being given out to the survivors. Oh, as he catches Gore off guard and gets the stock from the lean, he's going to be able to make it and gets it down. And Gore was the obsession, so we should see another stack of play with your food coming in. Oh! Oh my oh, goodness! Just barely. That flashbang save would have been amazing, but unfortunately, not close enough to the ghost faces POV. And we didn't see another stack of, of play with your food coming in. I wonder if, if it was because that they didn't technically start a chase yet, and that's why. But still, two stacks left. Did get a little bit of eruption value. Second pain res. Still has pot goes to weasel, and we see. They're gonna give the obsession back to uh, get ran by Drew while he uses for the people. Wow, an, an interesting play coming out here from Drew. FTP on to. Yeah, we do catch out. We tap, mm. but another pop will be not being used here. They've been doing a fantastic oh job. Dude, he got all that stock on Wrigley. And yes, and Renato now taking chase, but Ghostface not wanting him, instead wanting to get more play with your food stacks as he's going to leave this clod and gain another play with your food stack here. You have to admit that they need to get more pressure. No survivors are injured but one. Stock is on rigidly, but that's only it. Everybody else is completely cleaned out, and they're probably going to be reset in the ace. Let's go check. He has been keeping survivors on his toe, toes this entire matchup. They have been definitely look at them. They're all hiding, trying to get Ghostface to come by because they know that he's going to be checking gins and trying to find survivors rotating to these generators and hit them with a little bit of stock. So they're being very careful because they do not want to give him free stock because sometimes where Ghostface really gets you is when you don't realize that he was stalking you and got you to 99. So when it comes to a time where you need to take a hit or you need to finish a generator, you don't know if you're fully stocked or not. So it's very scary. Absolutely, and we do see the ace being reset. Oh, mm. Gore getting caught out here, and he's Just not like knowing we where said. the face is. Just and like we said. Was absolutely amazing from Ghostface here. I know he's happy wow. about that. 100% happy. Caught the claw net, not looking behind her, and not what what is wary of her surroundings. And it will be another second hook on the claw net for the killer here. Very nice. Oh, that definitely getting jump scared oh, there, possibly. The, ooh, and gets oh. the exposed on Wrigley. Pop on the Gen 2. On hook comes out, the survivors. Oh! Oh! Caught him! Oh my god! The survivors' awareness right now. 
needs to be a little bit more on point because they are getting caught out and we we do see Ace feeling but he is 99 and the mark halfway gone on tap we do see a reset also down on Claude four healthy survivors once again interesting is he going to be able to five detective tap and get him before his uh exposed status effect goes away that's the big question shrouded needs to find him he more than likely isn't though but he could be here nope the generator's still regressing survivors are definitely very scared here they're trying their best not to get caught look at this it is a cat and mouse game as we see the ghost face coming around and does get exposed by get ran by drew and the tap was there unfortunate at the last second does get another stack of play with your food though always going to take that here and get some more on Ridgely. Oh, nice. Wow, it's about 75% on this stock. Still have 99 on Ace. And we do see the mark, but he's not going to be oh! he's trying to mind game him. And the speed coming out is going to be very killer here. And the eruption proc on more gens. Is he fresh? Oh my goodness, such a great mind game. Definitely outsmarting a the survivor there at that very moment. Drew really didn't have nowhere to go after that vault, so it didn't really matter. All the Ghostface had to do was win the mind game there. Still one stack of pain res. We do see another pain res coming out as Ace gets hooked. And let's see, we still have one gen popped. However, we might see that regression um, event happen where the killer will not be able to regress the gens anymore as he's applied a lot of eruption, a lot of pops, a lot of pain raises across all of these gens. Yeah, I've been doing a really good job of making sure he gets eruption on all the gens, so when he does get that down, he's going to get some value out of it, as well as some awareness of where survivors could be lurking at. Now we're back down to only Ridgely being the only one that is close to being exposed. The survivors playing the long game here. Ghostface trying to get a little cheeky stock off, but he will not find anyone here working this gen, but he does see scratch marks here. And oh. see this? It was it was the tap who was 75%. And that has gotta be a good find for the Ghostface here. He has gotta be happy about this. Oh my goodness, Ghostface is getting some great plays here. Wow. Opting to take into the corner of the map here. And we don't see... We do see the second state for tap. Still one gen only. Look, everybody was scared right now. We're not able to come back for the quick onhook. Not so sure if it was too quick to, for the killer to come back. No. You see them Ooh. using the generator as a way to stalk too? I've never seen that actually, I don't think. Looked like they were using the generator as like an object to be able to stalk and glean from. Yeah, definitely. And we do see, I believe, this gen not being able to be rested yet anymore. And we did get half stock on the ace. Might come into play later on. As the game progresses, we're doing see we do see a lot more progression on the gens. The Survivor is playing a very slow game, and we'll see if it pays off for them. Oh! He caught him off guard a little bit. Got a lot of stock on two Survivors. This is very nice. Gonna be... Uh, oh, does get the Renato. Oh. I don't know if he wanted to, though. I don't think he meant to. He was just in the um out in the open as we're almost got Claudette there. And does got Claudette 99. Playing a little bit of peekaboo. That... Drop. Should do it, and it does. Will. Oh my gosh. We do see the last play with your food stack, though. <laughs> disappearing as the FTP helped change the obsession earlier on. And the death will be coming in the quad, though. A 3v1 situation coming in. Survivors definitely going to be feeling the pressure now. As the pop comes out. Yep, an extra two points, and now, guys, we are going to be in the 1v3 situation with only one gen pop. I don't understand how the survivors haven't been able to, but they've been just so scared of being caught out in the opening, knowing that at oh any moment, gosh. the ghost face could come in and get them and expose them and catch them off guard. 
as we see that Ace is only 1% away from being fully stocked and decides to leave here and get to play with your food stack and go and get some more stock on the survivors as they need to pop a generator here. Absolutely, and Ace getting caught off guard, not oh! realizing that the survivor he was on him and will be going down thanks to that speed from play with your food and the lake shoot. Oh! Another two oh points gosh. on the board. That's going to be 17. Still hey, has... we do see that gen regression not being... He's not able to kick that anymore thanks to the new mechanic from DVD. And we see that um, still one stack of pain res this late on into the game. This is probably the longest I've ever seen a survivor go without popping a generator. They have to have so much progression, you would assume, on these gens. Oh. Is going back to the hook. Tap able to get a little bit. He does get the 99 onto Ace. And for later on, if he does get healed. Oh, and gets rigidly. Tap. Oh my gosh. He is doing so well at getting these survivors so close to marking them. And he catches Renato. Renato not knowing oh! where he's at at all. He's going down. If I'm not mistaken, let's look. Hold on. I think, yeah, Renato's the only one that hasn't been hooked yet. And we see why his name is Ghostface. He is playing phenomenally here on Larry's. Definitely prepared for this set. And it's going to be a three points on the board. Still has pain. I mean, one pain resin. We see finally the first gen pop. Wow. Second gen, I'm sorry. First gen in a while, I should say. <laughs> and the survivors might just leave. The Renato here to pressure these gens, but Ghostface is going to be checking on them. And we do see both survivors, 99. Drew still caught out here. We might see a stock just to get the speed, but Drew getting a good stun here to get some distance, and the hunt comes out on Renato. 100%. Let's see what the survivors are doing. They have two injured, oh. one's not. Deciding to leave and get those play with the food stacks. This is going to be horrible for the survivors. Oh! oh. Catching Renato out. No. And this will be the ah. second cook coming in. Renato still being oh. able to. Oh! oh thing. Gets the save. Gets the save. Very they nice. The they needed that. They needed that 100%. What a play from the tap. But he does get caught out here. And the ghost face opting to not. Get the hit here as he, the tap is 99. Will the pallet break, but he's kind of zoned into this corner. Does, and gets another one, dropping these pallets very quickly. Yeah, at this point, if I'm shrouded, I'm okay with these pallets being dropped on me and kicking them as well. They are losing so many resources throughout the entire map as this game has been going on for a very long time and only two generators popped. Two survivors are 99, so the reset doesn't even matter. If anything, the reset is giving him more powers because when he gets that, if I'm not, um, if I'm not wrong, right? It gives him a speed boost as well too with the uh, add-on that he has, the purple one. Yes, yes. The sheath gives him a 10% movement speed. And Renato here getting hit over the pallet, unfortunately. However, he's the one survivor that is allowed a hook state here, and you do see another play with your food stack coming in as the ace. Runs away. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a pain res coming out. This would be very great. No, no, no pain res. Still has one left. Wow. We have to see the survivors at least finish at least one more generator, you would assume. Oh, oh my god. And he's the only one that's on that gen. He's gonna get caught out here. He and does get marked in the three stacks. Up. Three, three stacks. stacks. He's not going anywhere, bro. Three stacks and, and then the add on 10%, right? That man's just moving 25% faster. <laughs> and the mark does wear off on Ace, but he is going to be taking the trade here. Actually, not being traded, but just taking a hit. And wow, Ghostface is completely in control right now. Yes. Shout out to him. Stock is interesting. I would use it for more of the mind game, but you know, he knows better than I do. 
on how to play Ghostface, obviously. And wow. I mean, dominating nice. performance, man. We got three hook states. All survivors are on death hook. Three generators up. A dominating performance, even if the survivors were somehow in some way able to finish the rest of these three generators. This would be an amazing performance as we stand and got his third stack of play with your food. So if he does, and I think the reason why he did that was because of um, rigidly, like, I mean, not rigidly, shotted did that, Snipes, was because if he could expose them, that's still an extra 10%, you know. And, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. The movement speed helps, especially on these unsafe pallets. But we do see the two survivors going down, but they do get the pop generator. Very, very good. Still no pain res as the Renato gets death hook and Ghostface opting to slug the tap to try and find this Ghostface, making sure he doesn't get on one of these gens and pops it to bring it down to a 4k1. Oh my goodness, this is very intense. Oh. Look at him hiding in lockers. Don't I have no other it. option to do that. Anything but that. And since Larry's cannot be set for a determined hatch, it is completely random. It will be a 50-50 for hatch. So I expect this ace to wait out until the tap dies on hook. However, he gets caught out here. And unfortunately, we'll be going down. And that might be the confirmed 4K2. Very, very strong result here from Ghostface. And it does look like it's going to be that Snipes. Did a fantastic job. Still had one stack of pain res too, believe it or not, guys. Absolutely. And however though, oh, we do unfortunately catch out the tab here. And if he doesn't get wiggle out here with like a flip-flop tenacity, we could be seeing the 4K2. Uh, and we do see the confirmed 4K2 here. 100%. So the score is going to be 28 to 9. Very dominating performance. But Echoes has a chance to respond and try to do something here. I don't know if we'll see the same performance. That's going to be very hard to do. And look at the builds. Just back on Larry's. Rigidly this time. Taking up the killer for his team and we have a very interesting build no corrupt again but we do see two hex perks here and he has a very very hard win con to play for oh yes he definitely does we saw 28 to 9 so he's gonna have to stop the survivors from popping more than three gins because if they pop three gins it will be a tie if he gets a 4k that is correct but if it's one more gen, they would win the set automatically. Uh, uh, Rockus would definitely win the set. Absolutely. He needs a 4K3 here for the win con. 4K2 to tie. And we do see a swing and a miss at this very safe pallet. Ace playing this very well, oh. but does get caught out. Oh, rigidly feeling the pressure here as he swings and misses at aces, but he gets his shroud back. And we'll get some stock here. No, but not enough. Not and we enough. see the a ruin totem. I think it's the ruin that has been taken down. Wow. And Ace, knowing he has stock on him, knowing he has the Olsen's wallet, is not going to be dropping this pallet to give him back his power. And so Ridgely is just going to have to sit here and wait for his power to come back. Oh, himself. he gets exposed he again! Instantly revealed. No! Wow. No, nice he's gonna. Is. Wow, and another gin pops there. He had no choice but to leave. <sighs> Unfortunate. Absolutely crazy coming out. Pal does go down, and the Nia will be getting hit here. We will be seeing the sloppy butcher come into play. Maybe, but the survivors know their win con. They know they just need to pop these gens, and an early gen already. He is able to get the stock on the tap behind the gen. That is going to be very killer. Yes, doing a fantastic job, able to rotate around and get the survivors off guard. As we see, Tap is going to be exposed and will go down. Very nice. Oh. Rigidly definitely needed that. And we see Face of Darkness value first coming in where two survivors were at. They screamed. And we still have Marcus the Ace here. Going to be almost exposed as well. And that speed from the sheath helping hit that Tap at the window. Typical add-ons here, and we do see a pain res coming out on Damara here. Very well played here, and the 
Against the Darkness, very annoying perk here, especially on this map. Very hard to find totems Ooh. on this map. As you say that, the Caster Curse oh. strikes once again, and the next totem is gone. So two perks have, are already wasted here. Not much value at all, but still has Sloppy Butcher and Pain Res. We're going to see how the old Ghost Face optimizes the play based off of this now. No um, informational perk is going to be coming in because of Face to Darkness being cleansed so early on. No eruption either, so these gents just kicking them just to lose a little bit of progression. And goes back towards the hook as Magaris is still on it. The survivors opting not to go for it just yet. As we see some generator progress and the second gen pop. One more to meet the Wincon. I mean the Tycon. Yes, and the survivors are more than happy to let this tap go to second. second. Even die, even die yep. on hook because we see there's two gens on the opposite side of the map. And we do see so much pressure on this one. And I'm sure there's a lot of progress on these far ones as well. We see another kick out onto this one to stop its progression. But, oh, Hattie does get the reveal and she's 99. That could have been very bad for the, for the survivors here. It just shows you how amazing Shrouded uh, Ghostface's performance was in that last matchup. As we find the survivor that's 99 but doesn't have the stock up yet. Was able to vault the window. Going to be able to make some distance. I think they're going to go towards the library where there's a safe window and a pallet here. Ghostface is going to be in a little bit of trouble and decides to leave. Just got Bloodlust Tier 1 but going to leave and try to protect these generators as much as he can. And get more stock on the rest of the survivors in this matchup here. And... We do see Neo, who has no little, little, very, very little stock on her. Ah! We'll be taking a hit here. And we see Hattie nearby. She's 99. She should not be over here. We see the full mark coming out and the speed coming out and hitting her at the window. Just in the nick of time. And wow. gets it. Finally gets another down. Exactly what he wanted. Only used one stack of pain resin. We know that a generator is surely to pop here in just oh. a moment. Second stack comes in very nice. He definitely needed that as he puts another three points up on the board and giving him a total of eight points. Still needs 16, I mean, a 20, I'm sorry, to even get back to what the other team got. And we did see a missed skill check over here. Possibly them resetting here. Oh. This is the tap just barely. And he will make it to the window here. And the Neo will be body blocking the window here. No, he needed that down. And unfortunate wasn't able to. Yeah, and the survivors are doing a very good job. And we do see the Gen popping in the distance there. That will be the Tycon here. Rigidly will have to get a 4K right now to even meet that. Oh, and just barely. Firecracker not getting the blind, though. Oh, my goodness, man. A lot of pressure on this killer to perform. Nia is injured and does go down. Still has Marcus, though, with some stock. Almost 99, so that is a plus. And 12 Stout Street is definitely injured and so is the detective tap as clearly trash is going to be hooked for the very first time and only one stack of pain res left yes the survivors though did meet their tycon but they still have to pop one more gen to confirm it to confirm the win for this set and there is very little progress it seems on these generators See what the survivors are doing. You know they're trying to creep around now. The pressure's on. There's only two gens, so that means there's five that Ghostface can see. And they need to be careful so that they don't get caught out in the opening. Like we see Detective Tap and does go down huge for the killer. Huge. Definitely, and that is the death hook. So we will be entering the 3v1 here. And, you know, it's looking up here for Rigidly here. He definitely had a slower start and definitely um the survivors had a faster you know start to getting that first gen pop very very quickly but you know it has slowed down as the sloppy butcher has prevented these resets from coming out yes and we see another stun that looked like i couldn't tell who that was i didn't quite see just in enough time but yes the 1v3 situation is finally now in play given rigidly a little bit more pressure on the survivors giving them a little bit more confidence there still is two gens that need to be popped five up in the area and a nice little three gen here i wouldn't say the best but decently three gen over in the backside 
and sees. Oh, it's gonna be the only survivor that has no stock. Well, besides clearly trash, of course. So gonna have to be and just goes for the hit. Wants to apply the sloppy butcher and probably just gonna leave now. And that's what we are gonna see. Yes, and he really, originally probably really wants to find this ace here as ace has the most progress and getting it down on him will be very killer. And we don't see many, many much progress on this mid-gen, but we do hear a little bit of progress on this gen. I didn't hear quite at what it was, but we do find Marcus. Yes! Oh. oh! He didn't get the full stock! No! He did not get the full stock. Oh! Oh, that is so bad. I was gonna say yes, he got him and found him that got the stock off, but he did not. Oh, that has to hurt right now for originally. Indeed, but two survivors now are injured, and the sloppy butcher will be slowing down the heels or preventing it completely as Ace is just dying in this corner. We might see ah! another pop, but he does not hold those check spots, and we'll be going down very quickly here. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. very nice, even though that it sucked oh, that he didn't yeah. get the exposed down. Oh. Hattie lurking around here. And she will be not be progressing any gen, and we did see a miskill check on that farthest gen that we knew had the highest progress. And the last stack of pain res, and the last survivor that didn't have any hook states is going to be an extra three points. I mean, they are putting up points on the board, only need 12 now to get to the same score as the killer from last round. But they did meet the win con, but still, this would put the points very close. Oog does get it! Does barely oh. get it on 12! Oh no, it's gonna be a cat and mouse game now. Gotta find the Nia, she is on injured. That is gonna be a plus for the survivors. And not so good for the killers as she's slowly walking away. Not to leave any scratch marks, doesn't want to be revealed where her location is. And this gen was the highest progress gen. Ghostface will be getting taken. Not that far though. Nia will not be able to stealth this. And oh, I believe she was in that corner and Ghostface not checking that corner, but thinking the survivor's gonna go for the unhook instead. What a game this has been, sick. Yes, I agree 100%. Especially with the fact that originally came in here knowing it's gonna be very hard to get this win con and still doesn't meet it but putting up massive pressure as we see marcus as well getting to his second hook state and that's going to give him 18 points now only 10 away from meeting the same score which is what you want to do because you want to have even if you lose the set it's still 1-1 we're going into the, to the third set regardless if it was a tiebreaker or not but the more points that you get the closer the win con could be for like all the overall points is what usually in these situations teams are going to go based off of in these expedition matches we all hope you guys are enjoying the content, and if you are, put a put a S2 in the chat for us. And let's see where Nia is currently at as we see... Oh, we did see the other survivor get up. Nia was able to get her and going to get the onhook. Wow. And the survivor is doing a very good job of coming back here. <laughs> we, we went from one survivor up to now three survivors up. I two of them are injured. Though. I was wondering, I was like, how did that person type S2 so fast? But... That was you, getting ahead of the game, and does get another down, but still, the other ace, Marcus, is going to be on hook while clearly trash, and then we're going to be doubling up on a generator. Is it going to be enough to get it done as we see the second hook state coming in? And that gen progression wasn't that much, so I believe Ghostface will be able to get there in time, provided he checks it. You know, there's always a possibility that he comes back to this unhook, and or looks somewhere else but no we do see him and ace getting caught out here injured, injured survivor ah! and i believe he is oh. death on hook. yes i think you're right we can go check where the nia is because once again we're in the situation where nia has to try her best not to get caught as she is coming around the corner going to go for the on hook and decide to get her off of it and make it to where they can split up possibly and ghostface is on his way back goes into night shroud Gonna try to catch these survivors off guard. Is he gonna be able to do it? He wants to find the Nia and get her injured because she is healthy. And with Sloppy being in play, it would be a long reset if they were able to get each other back up and back in the game here. And we do see them going to this god palette here. Uh, it is still up, shockingly enough. The survivors doing a very good job at keeping the resources 
very well managed here, and we do see a blind coming out onto Ghostface, but Patty having another very safe pallet here, but does she make it in time? And just oh! barely the auto aim not in the favor of Ridgely here. And she decided not to drop it, was able to get one more loop out of the way before dropping this pallet, which was a very safe pallet, I would say, not a, one that you can really mind game at all. But we continue to see Ghostface pushing on. Definitely, and Ace was picked up in the distance here, and they were doubling this gen, and it has very high progress here. We will be seeing a hit onto the Nia here. All three survivors now injured, and this is going to be very, very hard to play here as Ghostface continues to keep up with the pressure. Yes, 100% amazing pressure. I definitely didn't expect Rigidly to be able to get a, a, at least maybe get a 4K here at two generators, which was almost a similar performance that we've seen from our amazing ghost face from last game, but just an, like, just is good enough, you know, just one last gen. Obviously, that's going to happen when you didn't get no value out of Ruin. As we see the stun and the possible blind, but it doesn't come in, and the ace is going to be caught on the opening. Is it enough for him to get down? And it's not, and he misses the swing, but doesn't have anywhere else to go, and gets... Whoa! Does it get the down what? yet? And does finally get the down. Finally. All survivors are injured, so now it's a game of finding them. They're, oh, and we see the survivors on the generator. She should be able to finish it. However, no, Ghostface is going right back. He knows this gen is the most progressed. It's going to be close. He is going to be trying to stick this gen. We do see a missed skill check on the ace picking, being picked up. Oh, she's yeah, taking it done. Taking it. She oh. does stick it. That's going to be an extra three points. That's what they wanted, oh. though. That will be the win con here. Met. Absolutely amazing job. Yes, you are right. That was the win con too. They def. I thought it was three gens that they. Um, I mean, they only had to pop two, but you're right. That was so able to get the win con here. Barely gonna lose it. I know Ridgely's not feeling well after that, but still an amazing performance here. As the win con was just met, and we have three hook states left. Just a dominating performance. And you got to add it up to Snipes. He did bring in two Hex Totems that were cleansed very early on with no value whatsoever. This could be a different game if Ruin was still in play as well as Face the Darkness. We have to give it up for Rigidly and Team Echoes. And we do see the Ace going down at this library window. And, you know, those Hex Totems going down very quickly was not helpful to Rigidly at all, indeed. And... Originally going for the slug, you know, trying to get the best win con that he can. Maybe going for a 4k1 here. And we don't find the spider quite yet. Oh! Swings through the pallet and gets the Nia. Man, almost had it too, dude. That was a very phenomenal gameplay. It took the survivors that long to be able to get that generator pop for that win con. And they had to sacrifice a death for it, but for them, that was okay. Absolutely, meeting that win con was what they were aiming for, and they played that absolutely beautiful. Ace opting to die as far away from that gen that had really high progress, and Ghostface just not being able to make it back there was crucial for the survivor team here. Well, if we continue moving on, he's trying to find his survivors. He might opt into just hooking Marcus as well and just get it out of the way so it's a 2v1. But one survivor is always healed up, and they don't want to do that because you won't hear them, so they're able to stealth very well. As we see him kicking another pallet, just getting rid of the little bit of resources that they have left. Both of these matches have lasted a very long time, as you can tell. It's with Ghostface, you have to play a little bit slow on both sides. You don't want to be out in the opening. Oh, and we see a flashlight save once again. The flashlight save coming in from the Hattie, the only healthiest survivor being able to stealth that very well however the window not helping the ace here as he goes down almost immediately let's see if the survivors are here for a pallet save this will be crazy back to back oh they looked like they were but not getting there in time let's see we will be saying goodbye to ace as he will be being hooked this final time yep and another two points on the board only needs four more to meet that 28 win con i mean that 28 uh points Right now, the total set score is 40 to 33. So another four points, but only make this a three-point difference, which is only one gen. Uh, and this is out of the uh, four games so far. If that doesn't tell you guys how close of a gameplay this was. And the dominating performance from um, Rockus on the first uh, Ghostface game is just insane. 
as we're back in another Ma mouse and cat game and 12th still being killed here not going to be easy to find for the ghost face as we continue on originally not wanting to take his chance with the 50 50 hatch he wants to find this last survivor he wants to get this 4k1 you know make it as close as possible and Hattie though has done an amazing job this entire game stealthing and he will definitely be getting some comms from Nia here that the ghost face is near him again and possibly trying to move to an exit gate or somewhere more safe. Now this is not a good place to be at. The ghost face is definitely going to check around there, but it just depends if he's already been there or not. He did check the one exit gate, but he has not checked the other one. However, ghost face might not see him in that grass in the corner it is a dark corner and the kick on this gen but i think that is not needed here no not at all just wants to make sure that 100 <laughs> percent they are not gonna pop this gen in any circumstances i believe this is the exegate that the hattie was clerking at ghostface checking it Find him. catching them The final chase of the game will be commencing here as Hattie gets found at this Exegate. Oh, whoa. Looks like the killer's playing <laughs> my Fortnite there. Misreading the play that the Hattie was going to do. Swings and he's hoping for that snipe all the way across. Oh, he does not. Doesn't swing this time. And going for a little bit of a moonwalk. A little, a little bit of style plays here from rigidly and the final down will be coming in yes finally the last down does come and Nia still up but injured I mean still like I mean I didn't mean to say don't listen to me guys <laughs> still it's down, still down yeah and, and yeah. just gotta find her Ooh, upstairs too? Upstairs, the bleed out will happen here, possibly. He does hear her though, and... Nia trying to get away. But unfortunately, we'll be picked up at the last second there. Yep, and doesn't quite make it. And we will be seeing a 28 points on the killer's side. Doing a fantastic job. Only lost a set by three points. You have to understand that it has to be rough. Six points, sorry. That it has to be rough based off the fact that he did such a good job with knowing that two perks were already cleansed within the first few minutes of the matchup. And with that being said, as we speak right now, the total score between both uh, teams as we speak is 40 to 37. That is insane. Guys, make sure you follow the stream. Oh, and we are back this time. Freddy on Midwitch here. Rigidly back on the killer. He's played all three sets now. Sick. What are we expecting from him here today? We're expecting, honestly, I don't know, man. Thinking about it, it's Freddy on Midwitch. Guys, when's the last time any of you guys have seen Freddy in comp? We asked to kill teams to play this, and I thought that Midwitch would be the best map. And we're going to see right now, as obviously in these classrooms with these um, Dream Snares, we're going to be able to put a lot of pressure on the survivors. Uh, originally, we'll be able to. Give me one second as I do the one last thing. Yes, and we will be seeing that hit come out onto tap, and he will be entering the dream state so that these snares will be now coming into effect as the slow happens. Possibly another hit, but no. Tap dropping this power, but he is kind of zoned into this classroom, and he will not be able to make it out, but he will be able to now make it back to the pallet that he previously dropped. And yes, and we see the dream snares coming in play. Ace does come in for a hit, but we do see Sloppy Butcher on to Rigidly here, and that is going to be very deadly if they cannot get the resets off. Oh, and we see a down. Very nice here. And we hear Survivor screaming. Oh, it's for the save! No, Rigidly oh. doesn't get it! And the blind right after. Rigidly cannot catch a break right now. And going into these chemistry not being able to do much here and we'll be going down back on the pallet maybe possibly another save coming in oh 
but no one is nearby this time, and we see one gen popping for this first down and the first hook of the game. Yeah, not off to a bad start. We're going to probably more than likely see a generator pop, especially if the survivors were doubling it up. So not the worst here for Ridgely. Going to continue on and put that pressure on these survivors. We see Sloppy going to be taking a lot of pressure on these survivors. One second. First pain rest comes out and we do see the save coming out very early. And we'll see if the... I believe this is the Hattie here. Yes, and we do have the God Palette. It does a little bit of a mind game, a swing from rigidly not being able to connect with the Hattie. And the God Palette will go down. There's two God Palettes on this map. They are located on opposite corners and going down really early might hurt them in the later game. Yeah, they want to be very careful in dropping all these pallets and these such early chases because if the Freddy is able to teleport and stuff and use his ability to get another down, was that, that was, did he interrupt it? I was updating the score. He was on, he went, he interrupted the gen and the tap was caught off guard here. The tap was going for a reset, it looked like, with the Nia who had high progress on this gen. And that was second state already for tap here could be an early tunnel out option very nice play though by the freddy originally really needed that with a little bit of a slow start with this killer but doing a fantastic job getting survivors to able to drop these pallets here and put on a lot of pressure and putting great placements on his uh dream snare slowing down the survivors tremendously as we continue on we're going to see him kick the gin or try to kick the gin finally there he goes Looked a little weird. Let's see what the survivors are up to right now. And you gotta think they were, they were pressuring these gens, but it doesn't really look like it. They're just kind of running around. And we do see him possibly confirming this death at four gens. It looks like it's going to be, may gonna be able to block the survivor maybe? If not, it's still gonna be a trade off. Oh, oh, swing to body block! Oh no, it was was it enough though? Oh, it was not though. We're still gonna now get it down though. And and we will be seeing the slug on the tab to get this early time out. This will be very good. And we see the survivors are resetting. They're not pressuring these dead. Rigidly knows that, and he knows that he has all the pressure in the world. Very nice. He still has that hook though. That's something to work with. And does catch the detective oh. tap off guard? Oh no, gets another down? Are they able to pick up 12? That's the real question here. And they are. Good. They are. But the tunnel out is still going to be secured. A 1v3 with four generators left. If you're originally, you have to fill in really good. But the pop in the weasel goes in the background. And an extra two points. They're doubling this gen. He's, he's going to opt to not kick it. And he knows that Patty is injured here and he's in this corner. This is a not a good corner to go down in as you are putting yourself stuck here. And we'll see if Patty is going to be able to make it out here, but Rigidly playing this very well and will be able to catch up very quickly here as... We know this yeah. bathroom is danger. There is nowhere to go after you drop the pallet. You basically, you have to have some kind of an exhaustion perk to be able to make it out without taking a hit. And as we see the Freddy getting another hook, Doing so good so far. I think this map is actually really nice for him because he's able to get in these tight areas where survivors don't have much to go with around the classrooms and able to use the dream snares to his advantage. And we did see that second pain rise hitting that gen with the most progression and now both of them injured and this could be very, very dangerous. We do see the unhook coming out and a pop coming out on another really 50% progress gen. And teleport. You see the cutoff, and Ace will go back though. Yep. We'll continue on at this matchup. Does he have enough pressure? All survivors oh. are injured, and the Sloppy Butcher too as well. And we catch the Ace out. Uh, guard Marcus ah! is going to be going down. Uh, very nice. And unfortunately for the Ace, we do see that classroom room not being having a pallet in it, and. He is definitely paying extra three points as that's going to be the first hook on the ace here. That is the third pain res too and the gen progression is at a all-time low. 
still four gens left to go. And we do see this gen, but he does teleport away at the last second before he pops it. Possibly trying to catch off maybe a survivor going for this unhook. And they're both injured, so it's very dangerous for either of them. It's in a corner, the last the corner, not a safe place to go. Yeah, right now, if I'm rigidly, I'm feeling great about myself. I could even stay here at this hook and secure the second stage if I wanted to. Survivor is not able to do much as it's a 3v1 situation and they're all applied with Sloppy Butcher and he still has one stack of pain rest in the back pocket as we see the second generator popping for the survivors. They definitely need that. But a dominating performance so far, definitely for sure, off originally here for Team Echoes against Rockus' survivors. But the second gen pops, they got a little bit of pressure, but they're all injured and the reset is going to make Marcus go into the second state here. Wow. Excellent use of his teleports here, you know, cutting these survivors off, getting those ch um, choke points, and Nia doesn't have, he, she does have a pallet here. It was dropped earlier, but any means necessary, being very helpful to slow down, a swing and a miss from Rigidly, that will be crucial, and we will be seeing another pallet here, but she wishes to make it in time, she does not. And she goes down, now it's time to look for 12, we see the unhook, so the Freddy knows exactly where they're at. It's a matter of catching them coming and rotating that way. Oh, we see a uh, killer. Uh, I mean, a killer check mark. Just a killer check mark. A, a check mark. And then a noise notification. Here. Oh, he does. But Marcus should oh, be able oh to get God. the unhook though. Oh, he gets it down. What is Marcus doing? Marcus is trying to make his way back over to clearly. Almost revived too. Uh, recovered. Sorry. I believe that Freddy will be able to cut him off in time. I don't think he'll be able to get this off, or at least it'll be a trade. It will be very close, and we do see both of them still slugged. Marcus, gotta be feeling the be uh, beads of sweat dripping down himself right now. Doesn't find Ooh, Marcus, but he goes for the pickup, yes. First hook state too, so very nice. Still has that pop, I mean that pain res in the back pocket. As we're gonna be putting up 18 boards for Team Echo. And I think we just heard the Hattie here. Oh, we also find the ace, the scratch marks here, but possibly getting the unhook before he's able to get there, but he cuts them off at the library and ace is not able to get down there in time and this might be a 4 key three on Freddy. On the midwitch. They needed this. Sick? I don't know right now if I'm originally I'm happy because of how upset I was about the last ah! game with Ghostface. Wasn't able to meet that win con and only got popped one more generator. So the survivors from Rockets were able to win the set by three points when shrouded for Team uh, Rockets put up an amazing performance as we've seen. And that will be a death on the ace in a 4k3 here. It's going to think to yourself, it's going to be almost impossible to bring a better result. And this is exactly what they need. Awesome. Uh, two gins pop. That's it. That is a crazy result, especially with no corrupt here. You know, a very aggressive build, and it pays off for Rigidly here. Yes. That is going to be a 28 to 6 run right there. As we get set up for the next matchup, we will get you guys very soon. Oh. guys are enjoying these Freddy sets welcome back to the final set of today and we see unicorn back on the killer on Freddy this time very difficult win con as rigidly came out with a 4k3 and we do see a corrupt which we did not see last game and he's just trying to find this early survivor as fast as possible because he has a very steep win con yeah we saw the first game with uh um, Echo's killing, they got 28 to 6, which is an amazing, amazing win con for them to keep as the total score is going to be 104 to 91. They only got 6 points that game and the score is still only about 15 points off, so not that bad. But I think Unicorn could do something here. It just depends on how good of a uh, beginning of the end game, I mean beginning game is, is that they have here is what's very important. They don't want to start off slow. 
Definitely not, and Ace doing a very good job at keeping the chase here in this corrupted area and will be taking one of those God Palas down. And Champion of Light slowing down Freddy even further, not being able to catch up Ace as he gets to another window. And do you see the first teleport coming out? Yes, that was definitely very valuable. Champion of Light giving the survivors enough distance as they get that slowdown for the killer here. Even with Brutal Strength, it didn't really matter. That Champion of Light puts a lot of slowdown on the killer. Gets them off the generators. Gonna catch Detective Tap out and about. Rigidly gonna get hit with the M1. No a Slobby Butcher, which is very surprising, but they opted out for Corrupt Intervention here. Oh! Nancy getting caught out in this bathroom. And this is very unfortunate. However, Unicorn chasing him the wrong way, but she does go down on the pallet. Very nice. So unlucky. Oh! Ace nearby for the same, but he gets hit as well. Two survivors injured, one on the ground. Unicorn applying this pressure. Already? Oh my goodness. He is going for this win con, and this would be crazy. Oh my goodness, yes, it really would be. You do see the stun though, and the blind not coming out this time, but falling for the mind game that Ace did. And survivors are getting up. Oh, he's doing such a good job here. Yeah, they were able to get the pickup so that they were going to stop Freddy's pressure. Unicorn had something working, but just couldn't quite get the ace down as fast as he wanted to. So they're going to see the pickups and probably going to be seeing the heals here for sure as he gets them the vault back and does a nice fake. Let's see what the survivors are doing. Yeah, as we do see the heal up, and there is no sloppy butcher, so there's not going to be much time. And decides to leave Grant by Drew on the ground here. Indeed, he does. And the reset is coming out. Oh, and see, God. Oh, just oh. it. God, greeting for that gen, and she does get away too to a pallet. And however, that snare coming out. Going does to slow it, does out. get it. This is where Sloppy Butcher would have been fantastic for the killer. But he needs to opt into going for the pickup as he does and get some points on the board. Now allowing the survivors to get themselves picked up and rehealed as rigidly and Azu is going to be healed and get ran by Drew is still down. I think the survivors are going to make their way there and they do and they get him up. But Freddy was able to get right up on them though. Not much distance to be made. No, but we do see Tap coming in and taking a hit, and Ace will be getting out of this room safely and not down. We do see the unhook coming in. Unicorn doing his best to keep up this pressure here, and Ace going right to this corner. Not a very good room here, but Unicorn has not broken this, so it's a very safe power. Wow. Ace being the MVP for the Survivor team right now. Yeah, doing a great job, though, still. Unicorn, steep win con. Might not going to be able to make it, but get as many points as he can because this matchup is very close. Just going to have to stop the survivors from popping these gins as the total score is 107 to 91. Killer going to finally put the second hook here. Is that going to be... Yeah, it's going to be a first hook on Claudette and a second hook... I mean, a first hook on the ace. But we didn't see a pain res here. We know this map is very rough with RNG on the Scourge hook. However, they do 99 their heals because no Sloppy Butcher. So the Hemorrhage will not take a place. And just in time, the pod will be able to get healed here. Pallet does go down in the Freddy trying to mind game. But Claude not falling for it and playing very well here. Nice. As we see another down. Ace does get unhooked and reset already. Sloppy Butcher would have been Ooh. very killer. Oh, it just barely. The flashbang not coming in. And the second hook will be going on the quad, and it will not be a pain res either. And we have not seen Pop get any value here. No, not at all. And we've only seen one stack of pain res and still doing a great job of keeping the survivors from popping another generator. But you would assume that one has to be close. So let's go check the survivors real quick. Freddy getting set up with the dream snares. And we see two survivors up. Ace going for the, I mean, Detective Tap going for the onhook. Does get it. Wow. And as we just saw that there's not much gen progression on these gens. So Nancy getting caught out here taking a free tag. 
and this one will be getting popped just in the nick of time here. And the survivors have got to get one at least pop for this win con. Continues moving on. He's getting a lot of good use of them Dream Snares. We know that it slows down Survivors a lot and gives the ability for Freddy to catch up. And if some people didn't know that if you were hit with the Dream Snares, you can only slow vault. You cannot, fa or medium vault, sorry. You cannot fast vault at all. And that does have a big difference when we're talking about Windows and uh, Valid Paul, uh, Vaults. And we see that Ace is getting caught. I mean, <laughs> Detective Tap, I'm sorry. <laughs> but still takes a hit and probably going to go back for the uh, pick up here. Would be surprised to see him continue chasing. He does want to get more points on the board as he still has three stacks of pain rest in the back pocket. Oh, and gets it oh. just in the nick of time. Yes, and we do see the unicorn block add-on coming into play. And that inflicts the blindness that is on the survivors when the survivor interacts with the dream pack. So possibly if they have any aura perks, that will be denying those. Oh, that generator is close to being done. Is Freddy able to find out what generator is being worked on and make it there? I think he does. No, unfortunate not. So we're probably going to see that next generator pop. And that would make the tie so far, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that will be the tie if the one survivors pop one more gen. Freddy just getting unlucky and not going to the right gens here. And Big he difference. Be... Nobody near this one either. Oh. Survivors playing very safe. Then they do pop it. Wow. So this Tycon has been met now. Unicorn would have to get a 4K right now just to tie it up. But these survivors, man, are doing a very good job at keeping this pressure up. He will catch out Tap, body blocking him for the God Pellet. Just make it to this. Oh, but not enough. The PT. No, that's unfortunate. And the God Pellet's drop, which is a plus here for Freddy. He's not going to be so upset about it now, but still, that would have been a very detrimental down for him. He needed that to get another hook state, and I think that would have been the tunnel out too, if I'm not mistaken, so we don't see it. No, it wouldn't have been a tunnel out, but still, the Claudette is the only one that hasn't been, I mean, that is death hook. No, but we do see Ace getting hit here in the courtyard. Not much to work with here, but he does get out here for free. And let's see what Ace is cooking up, because he has been the MVP in the chases. He has been the best so far. Redropping this pallet and just very optimal looping here from the ace. Oh, nice. Unfortunately, goes down at this very unsafe pallet, and this will be the second hook, I believe, onto ace here. I don't believe he got pain the first time, so this could be very good for Unicorn here. Yes! He does get it. He definitely did that. This skill tech will be denying and a pop. That is very, very good for Unicorn here. Pansy now taking the chase. We do see another gen pop though. And that is going to be the win for the Echo survivors. Yep, no matter what. But we'll base, we'll see how much it is overall points because as we're speaking, it's 113 to 104. Originally just needs to get more, I mean, uh, Unicorn just needs to get more hook states to be able to make the, the score even closer. Nice does try and teleport to try and catch Nancy off guard. But Nancy not vaulting the pallet and will go down here and I believe that's a fresh here. The last fresh hook, I believe, and possibly another pain res here. If Unicorn gets lucky. And it is the pain res exactly what he needed. This is definitely going to be good going on. As we put another three points up on the board. You know Unicorn's feeling better now. Catches the survivor totally off guard. Let's see what the other ones are doing real fast. We see the detective tap. The only survivor on a generator. Very nice for Unicorn here. Ace not winning that mind game here nope. and will be going to be leaving the game here as he is on final hook and Freddy knowing this is 
gonna try and play for as good win as we can. And does get to death on him. Finally, a 1v3. You have to think that hurts to take that long to be able to get it there. Now, gonna be able to put a lot more pressure on the survivors. Just needs to find a gin that's being worked on. That one was. But I think for sure. Yeah, we see the survivor getting off the gins here. And the lack of sloppy butcher is allowing these survivors to reset oh, very much. And what? Tap? He misses! No! But the, it's only music room palette. He oh. does get the stun up on the right side. Tap getting out of this very sticky situation that he put himself into. And he will make it to another pallet. It is dropped. And there is a window here. Oh, and the door's not broken. <laughs> oh. Unfortunate. Oh, no. You can feel the pain for Freddy. And they're probably oh. doubling up. Only No, only the Claudette is on the generator. And wow. The pallet is broken. I believe that was a flashbang. Not coming in and blinding. And the tap will be going down. And this will be the second hook state for him. Very nice. They needs this right now. Now, the question is, does he teleport to the right gen or not? He actually fakes it. He does see Claudette working on this generator and will be getting a, applying a pop to this gen. This is about 75%. Oh. Very, very crucial and unfortunate for the survivors here. Yes, that pop is going to be eaten away off on that generator. That's exactly what Freddy needed. And getting some resources out of the way. Now putting down some dream snares on these last few gens that are left around the map. Getting the pressure set up for the survivors as we continue on into this later game. It has been amazing so far. Indeed it has, Thick. And the survivors are just resetting, resetting, and resetting, man. They are just are on top of it but unfortunately it comes at a price for gen progression as we see Claudette taking chase here she is the dead on hook survivor this could be going into a 2v1 here very shortly if Claudette does not have a long chase and this is the kill the killer this is the the survivor that the killer wanted to chase out of everybody getting that second down even if they finish a generator with that second death it's gonna be a 2v2 which is oh. exactly what unicorn wants and we see the down Let's see if the survivors are doubling up on a generator. You would expect them to. No, only Detective Tap is on a gen while Nancy is finally getting on that generator that was hit with pop and going to be getting another pop value. Very nice here as we see the death. And Claude, unfortunately, blocking the window when she vaulted it three times and getting Ooh. the wrong side. The score the is classroom. tied up. The score is tied up for overall sets of 113 oh. to 113, and it's down to... Nancy! Oh my oh. god, I thought she got grabbed! I thought she was about to get pulled, but I uh, got off at the very last second. Nothing to a pallet, but not a very safe one. And Freddy coming from a unique angle here. Pallet does go down. It now is a 50 50 here. And Nancy is kind of just stuck here. Very nice. So far, just tied up the set. Needs to get two more points. But the survivors can pop another generator. Looking for rigidly now. Oh, this really matters. Oh, it's gonna pop it to. Wow. And just in time, he gets the gen done and going to be stealthing here. Freddy has to find him here to secure the 4K1. If not, you could be looking at either a pickup onto Azu or. Oh my god. Oh my goodness! Oh my! No way! <laughs> Freddy, not seeing him in the stall, and that is going to be insane. Stealthing from the top here. Oh my goodness! Amazing! Was able to get the get him and not get caught. Oh my goodness! If they pop this generator, if I'm not mistaken, it'd be um. Let's see, two, four, six. I think that if they pop this generator, it would be a tie, but I don't think we're going to see that at all. No. Unicorn getting this hook, and he does have pop in the back pocket if he chooses to teleport to this gen. And... It's 116 to 115. Oh, it is going down to the wire here. He does catch him at the long end of this hallway, 
but Ricky will be able to get this unhook completely for free, and two survivors are going to be back up, both of them death unhook. Nancy will be injured, so she will be the optimal chase here, and let's see how these survivors fare here. Yeah, it's so tremendous. Like, of course, uh, they don't win this set regardless because we saw a 28 to 6. The survivors have obviously popped two more gens, but that was such a dominating performance, and they're still up overall points. It's amazing. If they can get this gen pop, they would probably lose by two points, I think it is. Oh, and Freddy gets it! Is AZ. Nope. Not gonna be able to get on any generator at all. Not enough time. No, but the shit is so close. We know the survivors want this so badly, and we do see Freddy setting up some dream snares here, potentially trying to catch them working on this gen. And Nancy, now being injured, is going to be having a harder time to stealth out, as we can hear her from any level. Oh, this is extremely, extremely nerve-wracking for everybody in here so far. So good though. Both teams just playing amazing. I love playing these expedition matches. You guys have to think this is six games that are being played out by the survivors, and we're only at this very moment on what is going on and is happening right now. The score is only one point off out of six games. You have to admit, Snipes, that is insane. We've been seeing it every day on these expedition matches. Absolutely, and that gen is getting really close. We do see the Riggy slugged here. Nancy potentially stealthing for either to get that gen done or playing for a hatch here, possibly hiding in a locker. We do see a teleport come down. And this gen still highly progressed. I'm honestly shocked that he hasn't kicked it yet. Yeah, me what too. Do you think his, what do you think I, his thought process here is sick? I, if, if I had to guess why he hasn't kicked it, I guess maybe because He'll know, um, like, if he gets another hook, he can get it with pop, but, but both survivors are on death hook, so it doesn't actually make sense on why. You would have expected him to get the kick, to get the regression on it, and if a survivor did somehow in some way get back on it, he would know about it. Absolutely, and this gen was very close, and I wouldn't be shocked if Nancy is stealthing around there, waiting for the pickup, maybe, possibly, to get the pop just in time. Yeah, we do see tap here as far away from that gen as possible. So if a pickup happens, we might see a gen getting done and possibly a hatch escape, which we would be killer for the points for the Echo Survivors. We do see the pickup here, tap, and let's see what the Nancy is doing. Oh, gonna give him an extra two points. Gonna be putting him at 26, but if Nancy gets out... If, oh, it's 116 to 117. Raccoons is up. If Nancy gets out, Echoes would win the overall points. 50-50. Hatch spawn is not guaranteed. And Nancy... Oh, he finds it. No way. That Gets is so it. unfortunate for the survivors of Echo here. These Exegates are not going to be getting out. As we do see the Freddy setting up snares on the gates. And we do hear one on the other side. Unfortunately, this will be the 4K1. Oh man, insane dude. I cannot believe these gameplay from all the sides here. We've just had nothing but amazing gameplay from both sides on this set, on the last set, the first one. Like just amazing how close the game was too. Nancy going back and forth it seems like setting off these dream snares, trolling Unicorn here a little bit, but we, we do see... No, we do not catch her out here, I don't think. Oh, but finds her in the locker. I did not hear her, but we do see the final hook coming out of the final set. Amazing, amazing games coming out from both of these teams. They're playing their heart out in all of these sets, and they're just ex exhibition matches, 
and they're playing their heart out. We love to see the good sportsmanship here. Yeah, and with that being done, if they would have popped the last generator, if they would have popped that last generator, it would have been 119 to 119. But unfortunately, the total is going to be 116 for Team Echoes, 119 for Rakuis. I mean, R Rakuis, sorry. And they won, let's see, set one went to uh, Rakuis. Rack and set two went to Rockets as well. And then set three went to Echoes. Very nice gameplay. And if you guys haven't already, make sure you follow. Make sure you guys check out the Discord. And make sure you guys, make sure you also check out the YouTube channel. 